but there was there was something that actually that came to my mind in the scripture about when John the Baptist came preaching. He came preaching repentance. Now this is what what's missing here is repentance. I mean, you go to this church, there's a whole bunch of lesbians and, and homosexuals, and they're used to being rejected by society. It's because society knows in their hearts that there's something wrong with it. Not saying right. that you should gay bash a uh, homosexual, or you know, you should think yourself more highly if you're if you're a sinner or anything like that. But the Bible does speak about how that there are some some sins that um, lead are uh, some sins that are to death. And some sins that are not to death. Uh, the Bible does teach that. So um, we do know that when John the Baptist came, he came preaching some uh, uh, a doctrine of repentance. And we we know those that they repent, they were thrown into the fire. And Jesus came preaching repentance. And Jesus um, preached messages of hellfire. He said, "Don't do not be afraid of him who can kill the body, but be afraid of him who is God." Who after killing the body can toss you into the hellfire. How can you explain away scriptures like that? You just ignore it. And then the scripture that I like, if that's really sound concerning concerning this whole gospel of inclusion, is uh, again, it undermines the very foundation of the Christian faith. And let me read that. That's John 3.16. We see John 3.16 kind of used in a very frivolous manner. Mm -hmm. But let me read it. Because it's so important. And not just John 3.16, but the verses following, because it's not a verse that stands alone by itself. It says, uh, For God so loved the world, but that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever sh believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And most of the time we stop there. But let me finish. John 3.17 uh, For God did not send his Son, and this is the New King James I'm reading from, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's all good news. Verse 18 He who believes on him is not condemned. Period. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you are not condemned. If you believe, which is an act. Yes. If you believe on Jesus Christ, you're not condemned, right? Yes. Then it goes on to say, but he who does not believe, he who believes not is condemned already. It doesn't say he's saved already. It he's condemned already. Hold on. Carlson. What is it? Did you skip that scripture? Did I read that scripture? It's right in the word. It's in the Bible. If you're, you're already condemned, he's preaching the gospel of inclusion teaches that you're already saved. It says, but it says, uh, but he who believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And then it says in verse 19, and I'm going to stop here. And this is the condemnation. And for those of you who don't understand what the term condemnation means, it's like a sentence of judgment, judgment, a sentence of destruction, a guilty sentence. This is the condemnation that has come into the world. That loved men, I'm sorry, and, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So no, that's really the scripture no, right there. No, no, no. <laughs> that scripture totally that's really, debunks. Yeah. And, it, and that's so, that's something that's so amazing when it comes to the word of God. It, it comes, it's a double-edged sword. It, it comes to do its job and that's it. Just slice down, rip apart any false doctrine and any false prophet. And, you know, and that's all we need. Live by it. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. And you can easily see through the lies of Satan. 